every species plays a role. I think it's important for mankind to try to maintain the plant and animal diversity that we find within our world as a whole. The Wainema National Forest, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Kalamath Tribe, the Oregon Eagle Foundation, the Bureau of Land Management, and the Warehouser Company are working in a cooperative effort towards the preservation of the bald eagle and its habitat. These agencies are staffed by a team of hardworking professionals committed to the protection and management of our precious natural resources. Working together, the forest managers oversee the efforts involved in achieving the recovery objectives. The name is Ralph Opp, and I'm the district wildlife biologist for the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife for the Klamath District. A bald eagle recovery plan was developed in the late 70s and early 80s for the bald eagle. And a lot of agencies were involved in this, the state agencies, federal agencies, uh, we actually developed a uh, recovery plan for it, like we do for most species that are listed. It's a long-term plan to provide habitat for increasing their numbers up to a safe level. Let's travel to the Klamath Basin and learn about bald eagle habitat and forest health. Klamath County, in encompasses about 5,000 square miles of area. And there's close to about 500 different or entire species, birds and mammals primarily. About 80% of all the waterfowl that fly up and down the Pacific Flyway, you know, going to or from nesting areas up north, funnel through the Klamath Basin. Over 80% of all the ducks and geese and swans. A lot of those birds will stop over and rest and feed here in both spring and fall. Now we get a lot of species of animals, especially birds that migrate in and out and through the state. The bald eagle is a good example. We have both migrant bald eagles that move in and out at different times of the year, and then we have resident birds that are here year round. The eagle became the king of all birds by when all the birds had a contest, he flew the highest. All the eagles acknowledge him as the the chief or the head of all birds. In the language of the Klamath, we call the bald eagle Yauko. Yauko means a white-haired medicine bird. The tribe reveres the bird as a spiritual leader for power and to, to seek guidance. The Klamath Basin is home to 36% of the state of Oregon's bald eagle nesting population. The surrounding lakes, rivers, fields, and marshlands provide the eagles with an abundance of fish, waterfowl, and rodents for food. My name is Diana Pop, and I work for the Oregon Eagle Foundation. One of the things I get to do is play detective and go out and see what bald eagles are doing at different nest sites. I'll keep track of what perches they use, what flight paths they use, what kind of animals they're feeding on, um, where their important foraging areas are. And at the end of the season, I'll take that information and with Frank Isaacs, work out a site-specific bald eagle nest site plan. We developed a site-specific plan because all eagle nest sites are different. The landscape is different, the forest is different, the foraging areas are different and the way the eagles use those areas is different from one nesting pair to the next. So the site-specific thing is, is really an attempt to, to do the best you can for individual pairs of eagles at the place they live, instead of coming up with some broad management guideline that supposedly will work for all of them, because it doesn't. Hey, I'm Patty Butner, and I'm working on the Klamath Ranger District of the Wainema National Forest. I'm assisting in the monitoring of bald eagle nesting sites. Well, you go prepared with uh, binoculars, photos, maps, or a small motorboat or a canoe. I usually I set up a scope, find a good vantage point, and observe the whole area. 
Most of these nesting sites, the best observation point of the territory is from Upper Klamath Lake. You can actually observe the nests from the water. Each year, bald eagles lay one to three eggs, which hatch in 35 days. Their young are flying within three months and go off on their own one month later. After five years, juvenile birds discard their brown plumage in exchange for their unmistakable white head and tail feathers. Bald eagles live up to 30 years in the wild and can have a wingspan of eight feet. The bird's huge pale eyes, fierce yellow beak, and great black talons add to its grand appearance. We have a, the largest wintering concentration or wintering population of bald eagles in the lower 48 states. Professionally and personally, I think it's a good indicator of environmental health. You know, as the eagle go or similar species, so goes the health of the environment. And uh, all critters or all animals, men included, you know, being a function or, or a spin-off of their environment, I like to think of the eagle, as sensitive as it is, being a good indicator of the health of our environment. Year after year, the eagle adds to his nest, which can weigh up to 4,000 pounds. The eagles prefer the tall and sturdy branches of the old growth Douglas fir and ponderosa pine. A mature ponderosa pine takes 250 years to fully develop and can reach a height of 200 feet. The eagle needs my help, and I feel sad when I see that his world is hurting because it affects me and hurts my world. You have to look at, look at it through the eyes of the eagle. It's not a way of life anymore. It's a way of survival. Extensive logging, combined with habitat loss and illegal shooting, caused the eagle populations to decline at alarming proportions. In 1940, the United States Congress passed the Bald Eagle Protection Act, which was the first step towards preserving the existing eagle populations and their habitat. During the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s, use of the pesticide DDT caused eggshell thinning in the bald eagle. This resulted in widespread mortality among newborn chicks. Despite federal regulations enacted by Congress towards the protection of the bald eagle, populations continue to be threatened. Seven years of drought conditions in the late 1980s ravaged timber stands in the Klamath Basin. How we do our jobs is, is important in our quiet time. When we're by ourselves, truly by ourselves, can we say yes, that we're doing our part to keep this whole system in order. <laughs>